What's up, Fox 10 Fox here, and today I am talking about the Razer Basilisk Basilisk X Hyperspeed. Join the Fox 10 Discord down below. And if you like my content, consider subscribing. Now, a few videos ago, I made a review on the Razer Viper Ultimate, claiming that I did give it a recommendation. And yet here I am with a completely different mouse in a completely different price range in a completely different environment. And that is because this mouse has something that Razer's $160 version of this exact same mouse doesn't have. Does that make it something I'll recommend? You'll see at the end of the video. So let's start off with build quality. First things first, the plastic feels pretty cheap on top. It is a $60 mouse, and although the plastic isn't the worst thing in the world, some parts of it feel very cheap and have that glossy look to them. It also gets dirty very easily. If you have large or medium sized hands, I think you would have no problem using this mouse. However, that may vary depending on person to person. It feels different than any other mouse I had, including both the Viper and the Death Adder Elite, because the fins to click the mouse buttons are quite long. There is also a thumb rest, which I am usually not a huge fan of, but in this case, it really doesn't impede, especially because the weight of this mouse definitely isn't coming from any of the plastics or any of the other materials, except for one big one that I will talk about now. So functions is part of that whole what I'm going to talk about later. There are a few things on this mouse, and the one that I needed that a $150 mouse didn't have was this little switch here. The 2.4 GHz band and Bluetooth is not something Razer likes to give the convenience of higher end gamers and only relegates it to one mouse in one specific circumstance. To be frank, I'm not entirely sure why Razer would make the decision to have a mid range mouse have features that the top end mouses do not, but if there's anything I should know, it's to trust Razer blindly and make sure that I follow in their footsteps no matter what. And my single use case isn't something that everybody needs. If you prefer a 2.4 gigahertz band, get a 2.4 mouse. If you prefer a Bluetooth band, get a Bluetooth mouse. But I think that having both is great because A, even if you're using one device, having a 2.4 gigahertz band when you need it and using Bluetooth when you don't is awesome because Bluetooth generally has better battery life and that is stated in the Razer battery section. There is no RGB on this mouse, which is a disappointment because I love me some RGB and when you buy a Razer product, you expect it to be littered with RGB. There's a reason people like it. And yet here it is, just a plain old symbol. It does have customizable DPI buttons and in a position that's better than the Viper Ultimate because it is on the top and has five different customization options with a max DPI of 16,000. There are six programmable buttons, obviously the ones that are the most programmable or that you would want to program to be different are these two right here, and they are the cheapest parts of this entire thing. They feel like the glossy plastic, they feel pretty much kind of gross. They're very clicky, but not in the tactile sense yet somehow making that annoying high-pitched click sound. I just spent the past who knows how long trashing on Razer, and yet I'm using this mouse and I plan to keep it as my daily driver. Unless I switch to Logitech. I got a Steel Series with Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz for $80 with RGB and light. I'll be doing a review on it later. And this is coming from a dead-ass Razer fanboy. I always choose Razer first, and then I go to other things if Razer doesn't do a good job. The one very good thing about this mouse is battery life. Now, this is the first mouse that I've ever seen that runs off of a battery, and I'm sure that there are other lower-end mouses that do the exact same thing. Um, in fact, I actually think my mom's does, so that kind of invalidates my statement. But there is no rechargeability on these things. And in fact, they recommend that you do not use anything except for alkaline, which means non rechargeable batteries for this mouse. With that said, though, one battery, if you do well, recycle it at Home Depot, it's not going to destroy the environment with the amount of battery life you're going to get out of this. They rate it up to 450 hours, and I've got no reason to not believe them because this is the same battery I've been using since I got it, and it is just barely at 90%, and I've had it for over two weeks now. And one of the big reasons why it works so well is because it falls asleep when it's not in use, but it's not annoying. The moment you pick it up, it takes maybe a second for it to like be like, okay, I'm alive again. And that's perfectly fine by me because you're not going to your mouse isn't going to go to sleep in a game of CSGO only for you to have to turn it back on. After a little while, it will fall asleep, but not at an inconvenient amount of time. It definitely takes a good while for it to go to sleep. But when it does, that means you don't have to worry about, oh, did I turn it off? And this is something that is very nice with all Razer products. 
However, the way you open it up doesn't feel that great. You open up this compartment that's super weird. I'm showing a tutorial now. And then you open up, take out the battery and slot a new one in. It isn't hard, but it's a little weird. Um, and then right next to it is a 2.4 gigahertz band. In terms of durability, I think that this is going to last a long time. That's something that Razer does with all of their mouses. Just be careful. You may need to get super glue at some point to just re grip tape the thing because the grip tape tends to fall off no matter what model you get. But it seems solid enough. And I actually, despite my inconveniences, have enjoyed my time with this mouse. But as I said, and this is going to be my final recommendation as well. Would I recommend this mouse? Very, very iffy. Uh, leaning towards no, because for $60, I think you can do better uh, with more features or better build quality, but you can also do a whole lot worse. So I think that this is kind of a middle of the pack $60 mouse that has both wireless and Bluetooth compatibility. If you must go Razer and you need to have Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz, then choose this mouse. You're not going to do a bad with it, but you're not going to do great with it either. You're going to look at this and go, yeah, it's a mouse. You're not going to be wowed by the hand feel or anything like that. But for what it is, it gets the job done. So if you want to buy it, go ahead and buy it. There isn't anything that is stopping me from going. You don't you shouldn't buy this whatsoever, because I think that this is a fantastic mouse in some respects, but falls flat in others. So I, I would give it a recommendation, just a hesitant one. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, like subscribe, do what you usually do. And as always, buy yourself something nice.